What you guys got another video? Should you be buying a used old Dell Optiplex in late 2022? Now we're nearly in 2023 and people are still recommending that you go out and buy these Dell Optiplexes. And I'm going to show you some of the pros and cons and some of the things to look out for before you start dropping your hard earned cash on a old Dell Optiplex. So let's take a look at this one here on Amazon. As you can see, Dell Optiplex 7050 SFF which it means small form factor, Core i5-7500, which isn't too bad, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes SSD, and it has internal graphics. The first problem you're going to have is small form factor. That means it's got a really low-powered power supply inside here, and it also means that you're going to have to buy a low-profile graphics card, something like this one here, which then goes inside of the actual case. So the first thing you need to realize is, is this going to be too much power for that small form factor? You need to check the power supply to make sure it can actually run that little uh, modern day graphics card. Because sometimes it can push the power supply to its limits. And this can be obviously dangerous because it can catch fire or it can fail and break all your hardware. So you're going to have to obviously add in the £153 into this to get some sort of graphics card in here so you can play games and even then it's going to be limited the other thing to look out for is the images you can see these are stock images these are brand new ports as you can see on here no wear and tear which means that you're not going to probably get something looking as good as this it can be beaten scratched dented all sorts of things like that so take that into account before you start dropping your hard earned cash. Moving on to some of the other ones here, you can see this one is 103 pounds and 80 pence. Again, same sort of thing really. Uh, these have uh, stock images on them because the ports look absolutely brand new. Uh, these are stock images, which means you are not gonna be definitely receiving this for 103 pounds. So it's a little bit misleading. And what you're getting with this one is the same problems. i5, 6500, eight gigs of RAM, 240 gig, SSD and this has probably just been pulled out of some office and they're just reselling them online at reduced prices. Now we can get a rough idea here on the i5 6500 with the AMD Radeon RX 6400. They're recommending a 350 watt power supply in here. That little mini PC only has a 240 watt power supply in it. So you're going to be pushing it to its limits. It'll probably work, but it will get super hot and it can end up failing and uh, you know catching fire or even uh, breaking parts inside the machine so it's not good and it's certainly not advisable to use one of those cards in that machine why are they coming down in price well because end of life is near because the cpu in these is not compatible with windows 11 the end of life for windows 10 is october 14th 2025 as you can see here so within 18 months or so this computer is going to be completely obsolete unless you install uh, a linux based operating system in it or you run Windows 10 without any security updates, or you can basically uh, install Windows 11, which means it's not official and Microsoft could block Windows updates in the future, which is a big risk that you're going to have to take if you buy one. Now, what about if you went up to the MT version, which is the larger size uh, Dell Optiplexes, which are more sought after because you can put a larger graphics card in here? Well, this doesn't come without its own problems because you have to change the power supply and the power supplies on these particular models are proprietary, which means they're the smaller sizes, which will only yield 240 watts of power. And they're the smaller size, which means you would have to modify the case to get a larger power supply in there. And you would have to then use some special cable to get it working because all Dell Optiplexes are proprietary, which means they have proprietary parts inside of them, which means they're not easy to upgrade or change. As you can see here with this little area here, this is the small power supply they fitted into this large case, which means you can't just swap out your power supply on this particular model. If you want to put in a larger power supply, you're going to have to start modding the case and drilling holes and doing all that sort of palaver just to get it to work properly. There's also cables that you're going to need to get to jumper it. And then there's other issues with some of the other sensors and things like that that you're going to get with these Dell Optiplexes because they are proprietary to Dell. The other thing to take into account is at $161, you're going to have to buy another power supply. You're going to have to mod it 
you're going to have to buy some cables and then you're going to have to buy a new GPU to fit in here and also some more RAM because it only has eight gigs. So you tally all that up. It doesn't look so much of a great deal when you do that. Also, airflow is really poor in these cases. And also you've got some other issues with limitations with particular types of graphics cards. You don't get much upgradability with these particular types of machines either. Now, I just wanted to show you this PC here, which is £449. So I'm pretty sure you can get these in the States as well. This is a Ryzen 7 5700G. This is a modern day computer with built in graphics, which has Vega graphics in here, which is capable of playing games. And you can use something like this until you get enough money to drop in a GPU. Or maybe you've got a used GPU market near you where you can pick one of those up pretty cheap. Drop it in here and you've got a pretty decent system, which is upgradable and uh, more future proof compared to those Dell Optiplexes. So the time you buy one of those Dell Optiplexes and time you buy all the bits and pieces to put together, you're going to be pretty close to something like this anyway. And you can see by the specs here, it gives you pretty good specs for that money. You can probably build one even cheaper yourself. And you don't have to mess around with modding the case. It looks better than what that Dell Optiplex does. So in the long run, you're probably better off with going something like this than buying those Dell Optiplexes. And you'll have a much more uh, enjoyable experience with it rather than buying one of those other machines and having to do a bunch of work to try and get it working properly because this will just work straight out of the box. Now the sad part is as YouTubers, people will promote those Dell Optiplexes and people will go out buying them thinking they're a great investment and end up getting their fingers burnt. So let's take a look at this one here. This is a Ryzen 5 5600G. It's pretty much similar system, but all they've done is change the CPU, but it's £409.99. To me, it's a no brainer. You can buy this, and you can add a graphics card to this at a later date. It will play games and it will be a much more enjoyable experience than something like this, which is pretty old hat. And again, you're going to have to still buy a load of stuff to add to this and get it working, which will probably come close to what you would pay for that other system, which is going to work out the box. If you want to build your own, you can buy combos like this Ryzen 5 5600G with a motherboard for £219. Now, if you've got a case lying around or you can buy a cheap case, £30 case, get a power supply, get yourself uh, some RAM and you're good to go. You can add a graphics card in at a late date, maybe look out for a cheap deal, use graphics card and you'll be able to play 1080p gaming. Again, because this is new, there's no risk involved. This is another one here, $169. It isn't $169. The time you choose which one you want and then you start putting in for instance, the uh, chip here and the RAM and also the storage. And let's put a hard drive in here. Let's just say one terabyte. It goes up to 279. And you're still going to have to put a graphics card in this system here. And again, you're going to run into that same problem uh, with it's not going to look as good as this because this is a, a stock image. And the other problem we're going to have is with the a power supply issue because these use small power supplies which are proprietary and you will run into this issue so bear that in mind before you start buying stuff like this because some guy on youtube is recommending you buy these as cheap gaming systems now if you've been given one of these for free or you work in the it industry and you've picked one of these up from an office then by all means uh, if you've got parts lying about and you can cannibalize a decent system out of one of them that still works you can still stick Linux on it and you can still probably play the odd 1080p game on it if you have a GPU lying around or you snag one on eBay pretty cheap. But not everyone is in that situation. And if you are looking to buy something, I would avoid buying something like this and going for either a pre-built system uh, with a graphics card in it or build your own system if you can, because you're better off in the long run doing that in my personal opinion than throwing your money out the window because as soon as you buy these and put a graphics card in and a power supply you will never recoup that money for an old system like this if you go to sell it again you're just basically wasting your money on something like that so let's just quickly take a look at this 66 dollars one because this is what people are going to say in the comment section you can get them for 66 dollars but what they're not realizing is you still need to uh, put RAM in here because you're only getting eight gigs of RAM and it could be two four gig sticks, which means you're going to have to replace that with DDR3, uh, you know, 
DDR3, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Then you're going to have to put an SSD in there, which is another, you know, 30, 40 bucks. Then you've got yourself a graphics card that you're going to have to put in there. Find yourself a graphics card, which could cost quite a bit. And then you've got your power supply, which you're going to have to mod the case because it is proprietary. Uh, so you're going to have to buy that. And then a cable to make it work with that power supply. Let's just take a quick look inside here on the Dell website here. You can see there's very few uh, SATA ports on here. And they always give you just the very bare minimum. It's very difficult to have an upgrade path on here. There's a lot of stuff on here like sensors and other things that you, if you want to case swap this, you're going to have to go through a bunch of hoops to get that to work. It is possible, but you know, again, here you can see uh, some other little uh, proprietary connectors, which you can get around this, but again, it's a bit of a headache. You've got the stock cooler on here, which is obviously, again, proprietary. There is a way around it. Two slots on the board here. So that is inside one of those uh, machines. And if you look on the Dell website, there is plenty of people up there that have uploaded photos to show you exactly what's inside these machines. And this is the power supply that's actually in that machine. And if you look down the specs there, you'll see the actual power supply specifications. So you'll know exactly what you're getting into when you buy this, because when you put a, a graphics card in here, it's going to need uh, a bit, bit of power. And you can see here, it only has 240 watts maximum power on that power supply. So you're going to be very, very limited, which means you're going to have to replace it. Coming up to the uh, 12 volts, you can see here, we do have 16 amps, which isn't a lot uh, on the 12 volt rail. And again, you're just going to have to change that out. And it is a bit of a headache to start changing things like that, because obviously you're going to have to mod the case. And you can see here, someone's actually uh, put up some information here. You would need to modify adapter and also remove the internal PSU. And you can see here, he's basically put some pictures up so you can see them. So it is possible, but it just makes things a little bit more difficult. And these are all the hidden extras that people uh, sort of gloss over on their YouTube videos. They don't really give you the information uh, that you need to hear. And you go and drop all your hard-earned cash on something like this. And again, you end up with your fingers being burnt. So let's take a look at a spec of a PC that you can actually build. We have a Ryzen 5 5600. And also we got the Gigabyte B550M with Vengeance RAM, 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of a solid state drive. You can add an R drive in there if you wish. Maybe you've got one in line around. Deep cool case. And also a power supply, 500 watt. And if you look here, it's only $420. So with that said, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. So I'll leave that one with you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. And I'll see you on the Discord server, or I'll see you in the very next video. Bye for now.